Thy word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. Well, thy word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. When I feel afraid, think I've lost my way, there you are right beside me. Nothing will I fear as long as you are near. Please be near me to the end. For thy word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. Yes, thy word is a lamp unto our feet and a light unto our path. When we feel afraid, think we've lost our way, there you are right beside us. Nothing will we fear, as long as you are near, please be near us to the end. Yes, please, please, Lord, we call out to you to be with us every day, every minute, till the end, until the end. And today we are reading from the Word of God for November 28th, and we have been in Daniel chapter 5 today. Chapter 5 of Daniel, November 28th, and we will continue with this fascinating story here about the king and all that happens. So let's see what happens today, okay? Belshazzar, the king, made a great feast for a thousand of his lords, can you imagine preparing food for a thousand? Wow, I will be so happy to see the replay of that in heaven. A thousand of his lords and drank wine in the presence of the thousand. And while he tasted the wine, Belshazzar gave the command to bring the gold and silver vessels which his father Nebuchadnezzar had taken from the temple which had been in Jerusalem, that the king and his lords, his wives, and his concubines might drink from them. Mm-mm. Well, let's see what happens over that. And then they brought the gold vessels that had been taken from the temple of the house of God, which had been in Jerusalem, and the king and his lords, his wives, and his concubines drank from them. They drank wine and praised the gods of gold and silver, bronze and iron, wood and stone, all of these handmade gods that they had made. And in the same hour, the fingers of a man's hand appeared and wrote opposite the lampstand on the plaster of the wall of the king's palace. And the king saw the part of the hand that wrote. Imagine that, just part of a hand, not hooked to a body. And then the king's countenance changed and his thoughts troubled him so that the joints of his hips were loosened and his knees knocked against each other. Have you ever been so afraid, so attacked, that your knees knocked? The king cried aloud to bring in the astrologers, the Chaldeans, and the soothsayers. The king spoke, saying to the wise men of Babylon, Whoever reads this writing and tells me its interpretation shall be clothed with purple and have a chain of gold around his neck, and he shall be the third ruler in the kingdom. 
Now, imagine exclaiming all of that. And just, you don't even know who it would be, but you're saying you would make this person the third ruler in the kingdom? That's kind of out of control, isn't it? Well, let's, let's push on. Now, all the king's wise men came. <laughs> Wouldn't you? Such an offer. But they could not read the writing or make known to the king its interpretation. And then King Belshazzar was greatly troubled. His countenance was changed and his lords were astonished. But listen to this. The queen, because of the words of the king and his lords, came to the banquet hall. The queen spoke, saying, O king, live forever. Do not let your thoughts trouble you, nor let your countenance change. There is a man in your kingdom in whom is the spirit of the holy God. And in the days of your father, light and understanding and wisdom, like the wisdom of the gods, were found in him. And King Nebuchadnezzar, your father, your father, the king, made him chief of the magicians, astrologers, Chaldeans, and soothsayers. Inasmuch as an excellent spirit... How about that? Knowledge, understanding, interpreting dreams, solving riddles, and explaining enigmas were found in this Daniel, whom the king named Belteshazzar. Now, let Daniel be called, and he will give the interpretation. Positive faith from, from this lady, from this queen. And then Daniel was brought in before the king. The king spoke and said to Daniel, Are you that Daniel who is one of the captives from Judah, whom my father the king brought from Judah, Yehuda? I have heard of you, that the Spirit of God is in you, and that light and understanding and excellent wisdom are found in you. Now the wise men, the astrologers, have been brought in before me that they should read this writing and make known to me its interpretation. But they could not give the interpretation of the thing. And I have heard of you that you can give interpretations and explain enigmas. Now if you can read the writing and make known to me its interpretation, you shall be clothed with purple and have a chain of gold around your neck and shall be the third ruler in the kingdom. Now listen to Daniel's answer. He addresses those gifts first. And then Daniel answered and said before the king, let your gifts be for yourself and give your rewards to another. Yet I will read the writing to the king and make known to him the interpretation. O king, the most high God gave Nebuchadnezzar, your father, a kingdom and majesty, glory and honor. And because of the majesty that he gave him, all peoples, nations, and languages trembled and feared before him. Whomever he wished, he executed. Whomever he wished, he kept alive. Whomever he wished, he set up. And whomever he wished, he put down. But when his heart was lifted up and his spirit was hardened, in pride. That's always the big sin, isn't it? Pride. He was deposed from his kingly throne, <clears throat> and they took his glory from him. And then he was driven from the sons of men. 
His heart was made like the beasts, and his dwelling was with the wild donkeys. They fed him with grass like oxen, and his body was wet with the dew of heaven, till he knew that the Most High God rules in the kingdom of men and appoints over it whomever he chooses. But you, his son, Belshazzar, have not humbled your heart, although you knew all this. You knew all this. That's an important point. And you have lifted yourself up against the Lord of heaven. They have brought the vessels of his house before you, and you and your lords, your wives, and your concubines have drunk wine from them. And you have praised the gods of silver and gold, bronze and iron, wood and stone, which do not see or hear or know. And the God who holds your breath in his hand and owns all your ways, you have not glorified. And then the fingers of the hand were sent from him, and this writing was written. And this is the inscription that was written. Mini, mini, tekel, a parson. This is the interpretation of each word. Meaning, God has numbered your kingdom and finished it. Tekel, you have been weighed in the balances and found wanting. Perez, your kingdom has been divided and given to the Medes and the Persians. And then Belshazzar gave the command. And they clothed Daniel with purple and put a chain of gold around his neck and made a proclamation concerning him that he should be the third ruler in the kingdom. That very night, that very night, Belshazzar, king of the Chaldeans, was slain. And Darius the Mede received the kingdom, being about 62 years old. Whoa. And there you have the portion of the Old Covenant, the Old Testament, that we need to think about and pray about today and learn from the examples of these people, right? So we move right along now to the New Testament, and we are reading from 2 Peter, Kepha, 2 Kepha, chapter 2, chapter 2. But there were also false prophets among the people, even as there will be false teachers among you, who will secretly bring in destructive heresies, even denying the Lord who bought them and bring on themselves swift destruction. And many will follow their destructive ways, because of whom the way of truth will be blasphemed. By covetousness, they will exploit you with deceptive words. For a long time, their judgment has not been idle, and their destruction does not slumber. For if God did not spare the angels who sinned, but cast them down to hell and delivered them into chains of darkness to be reserved for judgment, and did not spare the ancient world, but saved Noah, one of eight people, a preacher of righteousness, bringing in the flood on the world of the ungodly. 
and turning the cities of Sodom and Gomorrah into ashes, condemn them to destruction, making them an example to those who afterward would live ungodly, and delivered righteous Lot, who was oppressed by the filthy conduct of the wicked, for that righteous man dwelling among them tormented his righteous soul from day to day by seeing and hearing their lawless deeds. deeds. And sometimes that's how I feel. How about you? I just feel like I'm trying to be tormented by the lawless deeds that we see happening. And then the Lord knows how to deliver the godly out of temptations and to reserve the unjust under punishment for the day of judgment, and especially those who walk according to the flesh in the lust of uncleanness and despise authority. They are presumptuous, self-willed. They are not afraid to speak evil of dignitaries, whereas angels, who are greater in power and might, do not bring a reviling accusation against them before the Lord. But these, like natural brute beasts, may be caught and destroyed, speak evil of the things they do not understand, and will utterly perish in their own corruption, and will receive the wages of unrighteousness, as those who count it pleasure to carouse in the daytime. They are spots and blemishes, carousing in their own deceptions while they feast with you, having eyes full of adultery and that cannot cease from sin, enticing unstable souls. They have a heart trained in covetous practices and are accursed children. They have forsaken the right way and gone astray, following the way of Balaam, the son of Beor, who loved the wages of unrighteousness. But he was rebuked for his iniquity. And guess who did it? A dumb donkey, speaking with a man's voice, restrained the madness of this prophet. A donkey, remember that? Caused him to spoke, to speak to him. And he answered him. <laughs> These are wells without water, clouds carried by a tempest, for whom is reserved the blackness of darkness forever. Oh, the blackness of darkness forever. Blacker than we have here on the earth. For when they speak great swelling words of emptiness, they allure through the lust of the flesh, through lewdness, the ones who have actually escaped from those who live in error. While they promise them liberty, they themselves are slaves of corruption, for by whom a person is overcome, by him also he is brought into bondage. For if, after they have escaped the pollutions of the world, through the knowledge of the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, they are again entangled in them and overcome, the latter end is worse for them than the beginning. For it would have been better for them not to have known the way of righteousness than having known it to turn from the holy commandment delivered to them. 
but it has happened to them according to the true proverb. And this is a hard proverb to listen to. A dog returns to his own vomit. Have you ever seen that? Pretty disgusting. A dog returns to his own vomit. And a sow, a pig, having washed to her wallowing in the mire. Have you ever seen that? <laughs> I have seen both of those things. All nice and clean. Pig looks great. And what does the pig do? Go right back and splash down in all the mud. Great examples for us, right? We move right along now, and we are continuing in the longest psalm in the Bible, Psalm 119. And each section starts with a Hebrew letter. Today, we have Samach. Samach. I hate the double-minded, but I love your law. You are my hiding place and my shield. I hope in your word. Depart from me, you evildoers, for I will keep the commandments of my God. Uphold me according to your word that I may live and do not let me be ashamed of my hope. Hold me up and I shall be safe and I shall observe your statutes continually. You reject all those who stray from your statutes for their deceit is falsehood. You put away all the wicked of the earth like dross. Therefore, I love your testimonies. My flesh trembles for fear of you, and I am afraid of your judgments. And we move along to the next section, and the next Hebrew letter is Ayin. Ayin. I have done justice and righteousness. Do not leave me to my oppressors. Be surety for your servant for good. Do not let the proud oppress me. My eyes fail from seeking your salvation and your righteous word. Deal with your servant according to your mercy and teach me your statutes. I am your servant. Give me understanding that I may know your testimonies. It is time for you to act, O Lord, for they have regarded your law as void. Therefore, I love your commandments more than gold. Yes, than fine gold. Therefore, all your precepts concerning all these things I consider to be right. I hate every false way. And I can agree with all those words. I pray that you can. So that's the little portion we have for today. We move right along and we finish up the reading of the Word of God for this wonderful day, November 28, with Proverbs chapter 28, verses 19 and 20. Proverbs chapter 28, verses 19 and 20. He who tills his land will have plenty of bread, but he who follows frivolity will have poverty enough. If you don't work and there isn't a paycheck, eventually it catches up to you, doesn't it? I'm going to read that again because it's so good. Proverbs 28, 19. He who tills his land, works it, will have plenty of bread. But he who follows frivolity will have poverty enough. And verse 20. A faithful man will abound with blessings, 
but he who hastens to be rich will not go unpunished. I'm going to read that verse 20 again also. Very good for today's people. A faithful man will abound with blessings, but he who hastens to be rich will not go unpunished. There'll be trouble along the way as you hasten things faster than the Lord had in mind for you, right? So let's just go the speed of the Lord and how he has that working in our lives, right? And things go better. Let's close with prayer. It's so good to be with you this morning. I want to thank you and bless you in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Bless your day. Bless all that you think, all that you say and do. Bless everything you put your hands to. Let's endeavor to walk a righteous path today. The Holy Spirit will help you and me both. He will help. He will guide. He will teach. He will comfort. He will comfort you in all the things that have caused you sorrow and hurt. Let's pray. Precious Father God, we come to you the way you have asked us to come. We come through your only Son, Jesus Christ of Nazareth, the Messiah. We come through him, Lord. We kneel and we bow our hearts and our spirits and our knees before you. And Lord, we worship you today. We lift you high, for you have shown yourself great and mighty in our lives. Lord, we are so grateful for your word. We are sowing it in our hearts and minds as best we can, <clears throat> so that it will always be, always be there inside of us. Lord, we want to thank you for your word today. It's powerful and mighty, and it gives us great lessons, great hope. It brings upon us a godly fear of you. Our breath, our every heartbeat is in your hands. And so, Lord, we appreciate, we appreciate this new day. Father God, we hold up your special people, the Jews, we hold them up to you, Lord, in Israel and all across this earth. <clears throat> Father God, you are, you are doing incredible things amongst your people, and some are almost, they're dreadful to see what's happening. But Lord, we know that you know, and we know, Lord, that our way should be to pray for your will that your will would happen. And Lord, we are believing that everything good and bad happening will only draw them unto you, will bring them unto you, your special people that you have called out, and that they will cry out to you, and that they will come to you with their whole hearts, their whole minds. They will depend on you in this very crucial, crucial time that has happened. Precious Father God, <clears throat> we ask this. We come to you, Lord, and we intercede for your people. We pray for the peace of Jerusalem, the peace of Israel, the peace of Gaza. We pray, Lord, that both Jew and Arab, both everyone from Palestine and from all the surrounding countries will be drawn unto you in a great and mighty revival. Lord, we understand that many are having visions and dreams of you, personal times that you are giving them individually. And Lord, they are sharing it 
and it is causing a stir. But we are so happy to hear this, Lord, that they are having their own encounter with you. We bless you for this, Lord. We thank you. And we ask that you would use it to draw all the peoples of the earth. Give every single one a chance to hear your precious gospel, to hear how you gave yourself, gave your life, to pay the price of each one of our sins. Took all of it upon yourself and paid with your own blood, your own beating, beaten more than anyone ever was because the hatred of Satan was so expressed. Lord, we continue. You have asked us to pray for peace and we will continue to pray right in the middle of the storm. Father God, let your peace come to their hearts. Father God, we thank you <clears throat> for some of the captives have been released and brought back to their families. And we'd ask, Lord, that your love and the love of the people would minister to them all that they need of a very oppressed time in their life. Oh, Lord, please, we pray. We pray in our own native language. And Lord, I intend to pray in the spirit, in tongues, and ask you that my spirit intercede for all of them, the children, the ladies, and the men. And that, Lord, your right hand will bring about more deliverance. We pray for deliverance, Lord, in a mighty, mighty way. We pray, Lord, that the fear of you would fall on those who have done these murders, who have done these terrible tragedies, some of them unspeakable. Lord, please, it's our prayer desire that they hear the gospel with understanding also and have their chance to totally repent and to come to you. Lord, we hold up all of those on our own prayer lists, our friends, our relatives, as we walk through this wonderful Thanksgiving season and we begin the preparations to celebrate your birthday, Lord, your birthday. And Lord, we ask you help us to put that first, to celebrate you in every way that we can, more than giving to each other, to put you number one, to sing happy birthday to you and to celebrate in every way we can your marvelous love for us and all of God's children. Quite a hearty amen. <clears throat> Lord, we also lift up the leadership in every single office and position in America. And we'd ask, Lord, that you would cause many to come to you, that they would have the gospel now in their hearts. And those, Lord, who simply refuse, we'd ask in Jesus' name that you would remove them and put righteous people, people who put you first, who love you, who love America, who love this country, and intend to do a good job with all their might. Please, Lord, we lift up these prayers and many more to you. In the name of Yeshua HaMashiach, Jesus, the Christ, the soon coming King and Lord of the entire earth, and all of God's people, cry a hearty amen to the things that you agreed with and have a beautiful day in him. Bye-bye.